The unique mini PC with a power dial is back. What a twist. And thankfully, it looks better than its predecessor known as the AMR5. This one's been beefed up substantially. It's bigger, faster, better. That's something we'll have to test to find out. I like that the RGB on the sides of it is gone, so my retinas don't need to suffer. But does it impress in other ways? Details right after this message. The EaseUS disk copy software makes upgrading your storage drives faster and easier. Clone drives or migrate Windows installations to new ones with a simple and easy to use interface. This app supports disk, system, and even partition cloning. Find out more with the link in the video description. So, Camry's AM08 Pro is definitely a lot bigger than the AMR5, and that's because there have been some changes under the hood. This one drops AMD's 5000U series processors in favor of the 8-core 16-thread 7735HS with Radeon 680M graphics. Apart from its larger size, the actual design is very similar. The power dial works the same way. Silent, auto, and performance mode. Each one increases the maximum power limit in real time, which is a pretty cool gimmick. This mini is still made of plastic. It creaks a little when you put pressure on the sides, but it's not too bad. RGB lighting is back, although much more tastefully done, and just on top of it. Oh, and it opens the same way as before if you want to upgrade it, which we'll check out shortly. Overall build quality is fine for the price, which is $339 US dollars after the coupon for the 32GB RAM, 512GB storage model on Amazon.com. That's a very competitive price point for what you get. Mini-wise, I mean. The actual box doesn't come with much. There's a chunky power supply and a HDMI cord. Definitely would prefer a compact FSP or HUN key brick over this one, but it'll have to do. Apart from the power dial, the front has two USB 3 5 gigabit ports and one Type-C, which Device Manager reports as USB 4. But I don't think it's a 40 gigabit port, as I couldn't get my eGP working on it, as we'll see later on. But the port does support both power delivery and display, and worked fine with my USB-C monitor. The back has another two USB 3 5 gigabit and dual HDMI 2.0, so with the USB-C, three displays are possible. Networking is handled by a Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN jack, or Realtek 8852BE Wi-Fi 6. Bluetooth wireless range on this one is decent at 4 meters and matches some of the better results so far. As mentioned before, the AM08 Pro opens the same way. It has a magnetic cover you just pull off to get access to storage and RAM. Very easy. Good to see a heatsink on the NVMe drive, and I can also see the M.2 wireless card under the plastic shroud. You'll need to tear the Mini down further. The only storage expansion is 2.5 inch SATA. When you fire it up, you'll be greeted by Windows 11 Pro. Happy to report no malware was found with both Windows Defender and Malwarebytes on this unit. While that's good news, there's a couple things I don't like with the Windows OS included. First is Google Chrome being pre-installed. Chrome is no longer the browser it once was, and even if I did want it, I can install it myself. I think the majority consensus would be Windows should just be a clean install on each mini. Secondly, while I'm fine with the RGB lighting app being provided up front, it automatically pops up every time on Windows Startup instead of starting minimized, and there's no easy option in the app to not have it start up with Windows. On top of Chrome, I guess it's something you can remove as well if you don't use it. I find pop-ups of any kind to be an annoyance, and there's got to be a better way of doing this. Not a big deal, but these small changes could be ironed out to make this mini more sexalicious. Yes, I said it. Anyway, if you do decide to use another OS, Ubuntu worked without any problems when tested off a USB. Obviously, the RGB app won't work, so you can't customize the lighting. Alrighty then, let's jump into the benchmarks. I've been hitting too many limitations with Google Sheets, so I made the long and painful transition of remaking my graphs in Microsoft Excel. The new graphs are making their debut in this video. How exciting. The AM08 Pro's single core score is unaffected by the power modes and performs a bit under a 6900HX. Multi-core performance heavily depends on the power limit. From silent to auto mode, there's a 28% increase, and from auto to performance is a 13% jump. So, diminishing returns there. 
And from silent to performance, there's a 44% increase in score. That's huge. Geekbench on the other hand shows no improvement in single core and there's only a 12% jump in multi-core. But H.264 software video encoding also begs to differ and the difference is 23%. AV1 shows a similar result. Big jump from silent to auto and then a smaller one when you go all out. No AV1 hardware encoding on this AMD chip means software encoding only. Personally, I wouldn't label a Mini with integrated graphics as a gaming PC like the AM08 Pro claims to be, but it has good integrated graphics performance for the price. And again, it is affected by the power mode you use. There's almost a 13% jump in score from the bottom to the top in DX11. TypeSpy DX12 shows similar results and the same with Steel Nomad. The included Gen 3 NVMe drive isn't fast. Sequential write is around half of what Gen 3 can do, but it's an okay OS drive for most usage cases. Next, we throw in a Gen 4 drive to see if Gen 4 is supported, and going by the speed results, it's a Gen 4. Okay, before we jump into the gaming tests, first we need to check if the system holds up under a gaming load and doesn't thermal throttle due to the DDR5 overheating. Power dial is on performance, and let me just leave it for a while. So I'm back 45 minutes later and the frame rate hasn't changed. Both DDR5 sticks are holding under 70C. The minis that had overheating DDR5 issues did so in 15 minutes or less and saw big drops in frame rate, around 20 to 30%. All right, so the power dial lets me do something different with the game tests. I'll give you a visual representation of how the Ryzen 7735HS scales with the increased power limits. Let's start off with a secure boot compatibility test. I'm now changing Valorant from low to medium level detail settings to lower the CPU bottleneck. And surprisingly, there's not that much difference between the three power options. But with Counter-Strike 2, you can definitely see the difference. And in the single player games, you can definitely see the jumps in frame rate. Now for some emulation. Okay, so the big takeaway is there's not a huge difference between auto and performance in most cases. The biggest drop is when using silent mode. And yeah, I could definitely hear the fan noise drop down as I jerked and twisted the knob round and round before it finally... What were we talking about again? This is the part where I'd show you the mini with an eGPU. But like the recent GMK Tech M6, I couldn't get it to work, with the same Code 10 error. I've managed to get an eGPU working on every other Mini with a USB 4 or Thunderbolt port reviewed on this channel, except for these two Minis. Hmm, maybe they're not 40 gigabit compliant. Video editing at 4K using Adobe Premiere is okay on this CPU, but you can see when the CPU spikes in utilization, it can be lagged before the video plays. As always, if the goal is video editing, go Intel. QuickSync does a far better job. In the BIOS, you'll find Wake on RTC in the advanced OEM options, and there's AC power loss in the AMD CBS section. That's about it for what most of you are looking for. Idle power draw is on the lower side at 9 watts, and the max depends on the power mode, as low as 54 watts, going up to 87. Interestingly, the maximum CPU temp didn't vary much between the three power options. Not the greatest temps, but far from the highest. What will change though is the maximum fan noise. Silent isn't silent under load, but it's clearly quieter than the other two, and on the first two modes, it's not a loud mini PC at all. So, well done there. The heatsink on the NVMe drive helps to keep temps a bit lower, 
but my favourite number is starting to get on the high side. The drive at least didn't thermal throttle during my thrash test. The Camrui AM08 Pro was fun to review. Nice to be able to check out something different. So let's finish this one up with the pros and cons. This Mini's price is attractive. You get a lot of hardware for your dollars. The power dial is either useful to you or useless if you don't plan to use it. You can definitely hear the drop in fan noise between the three modes, so I think this time around it's less of a gimmick than it was on the low powered U series AMR5. If you like unique mini PC designs, this one is for you. Vertical minis aren't common, so it's cool to see another one. Opening it to get access to the memory and storage doesn't get any easier. And load fan noise is pretty good at the auto setting. All that being said, I would have liked to see a cleaner Windows install, but there's no malware or viruses, so that's most important. The USB 4 port did not work with my eGPU. This is only the second Mini that I haven't been able to get it working with, and the error was exactly the same. Camry's AM08 Pro is light on accessories, but big on power supply. The opposite would be nice. So that's it. Some things could be better, but I think it's a good option for sub 350 US dollars. What do you guys think? Does it tickle your fancy? Does it get your engine revving? Sound off in the comments, and you can find my affiliate links in the video description, which helps to keep the channel going. And if you are curious about the predecessor, the AMR5, I've got a review of it from Ace PC right here. Cheers!